a hip to the hip hop and you don't stop rocking to the beat no 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 it's kind of like the step you know so She's like, wow, this is really cool. Me so horny, me so horny. Look, I'm the best. <laughs> like, uh. Oh, where is the rhythm? Where is the rhythm? Ah, there it is, there it is. Shut the LM. Because some people think hip hop oh, it's music, but it's more than music. It's yeah, bitches and drugs and guns, and everybody would start dancing like crazy, you know? Yeah, mm, I don't know. Really, I don't know nothing about Ukrainian hip hop. The, the new, the new, uh, modni. Police, idi, na, you know what. Well, I can say it. Fuck the police. Hey, round. So, um, welcome to Karinya. Um, Karinya is a concept of Chernozem. <laughs> it's very abstract. Uh, Chernozem is a team of creative people uh, who try to push forward music culture in Kremenchuk. Uh, Karinya meaning roots, right, in English. Um, and the roots that we want to present is of some kind of music culture. Uh, this day, today, it's uh, hip hop. So I'm going to try to give you some history about hip hop with some uh, uh, examples that I brought. Uh, and I hope at the end of the presentation, you will be smarter or more interested in hip hop. Uh, so yeah, so hip hop started uh, specifically in 1973 um, in New York City. And in specifically one part of New York, New York City called the Bronx. And it was not just the Bronx, it was the South Bronx. So a really small part of the town where um, hip hop took root, yeah, where it really uh, started shaping uh, its form. Um, and to understand how hip hop started, I think it's important to not only give the geographical context, New York, uh, like an urban, urban uh, context, but also the economical and social cultural context. So, South Bronx at that time, uh, part of New York City, and New York City had become bankrupt. So, uh, it means that New York City is cutting spending on social programs, even on uh, fire departments. Um, yeah, because there, there's no money. And so the South Bronx, it used to be in the 60s or, or a lot of those urban areas uh, in, um, in New York were kind of a nice mix of different races, whites, blacks, um, Latinos, um, many different uh, cultures that kind of had a nice mix uh, living there together. Yeah. And so the 70s, there was like this recession, very bad economy. And so the, the, the white people, they, they moved out to like suburban areas outside the city mm -hmm. because they had the money to, to buy a house there. Mm -hmm. And so it was only left with um, Africans, um, a lot of Puerto Ricans also. Uh, Puerto Rico is like a part of the United States kind of, and they have like a United States passport. So they could emigrate from there. And also a lot of people from Jamaica and the Caribbean islands. A bit like, you know, phrase by phrase. Okay. Uh, and so, um, 
латиноамериканці, афроамериканці, і особливо багато представників Ямайки та Пуерто-Ріко. Um, and so there was kind of like an exodus, but the people who stayed, they wanted to make their community something nice, but it was very difficult. Ось вони хотіли якось розвивати спільноту там. Хоча це було надскладно через умови. There were a lot of buildings that were set on fire. Багато будинків тоді горіло. So over a decade, like let's say from end of the 60s till the end of the 70s, they lost 80% of all their buildings, all their houses. З кінця 60-х до кінця 70-х десь 80% взагалі житлової, житлової структури, інфраструктури згоріло. And the most common theory is that the owners of the buildings they set fire to those buildings to claim insurance money. Yeah, є теорія, що власники тих будівель, вони самі взагалі влаштували ці пожежі, щоб просто отримати гроші виплати за страхування. But also like speculators who wanted to make new buildings, uh, they they could also like ask some gangs like set fire to this building and then we can go to the owner say oh we pay a small amount for the land and we can put like new buildings on there Або so that's такі різні такі недобрі люди просили різні банди просто спалювати ці будинки щоб потім йти до власників того тієї будівлі просто просити ми можемо там купити у вас цю землю і вони хотіли там просто будувати своє щось mm-hmm. so that's a little bit of the social economical context of how hip hop was created but how was it actually like who was the first guy uh, that there's like a general um, agreement that there's one guy who really started it and that was DJ Cool Herc. Cool Herc was of um, um, Jamaican descent so he had all these um, Caribbean cultural backgrounds and in the Caribbean there's a big culture of reggae dub music and of making their own sound systems. Тобто він взагалі ямайського походження, і саме на ямайську є була розвинута культура регі та дабу, як називається. І вони у ямайців самі робили звукове обладнання, саме їх його створювали. So, he uh, DJ Cool Herc, he had his own sound system. He built it himself. Um, and he was a DJ and so he had a small sister and his sister asked him to throw a party uh, a back to school party. і в нього була маленька сестра, яка попросила його влаштувати вечірку, яка так назад у школу. Yeah, and that was like a, the back to school jam they called it. They made like some flyers. Uh, yeah, the entrance was 25 cents for girls or ladies and 50 cents for boys. Um, and the, ціна була типу 25 центів для дівчат, 50 для хлопців. And the idea or that's that's what they say is that it was so that she could buy some stuff for school. Like she needed money, they were poor and she wanted to buy some new tetrads or, you know, copy books or maybe some clothes, you know, to look look cool. Щоб отримати трохи грошей, щоб вона купила просто одяг хоча б для школи. Ну, це була бідна сім'я. And so that was the the first party kind of uh, the first hip hop party it was 11th of August on uh, 73 in the South Bronx. And they did it in like their community room like they have big buildings where they live and on the ground floor or even in the basement there would be like a community room where kids could I don't know play ping pong or whatever and they threw this party in the community room. Cool Herc he uh, played music which was funk and soul. Yeah, and he noticed, he saw that when there was the part of the drums, like there was a focus on the drums in a, in a song, that the energy on the dance floor, it would go up and everybody would start dancing like crazy, you know? And he noticed that there is a part of the song where there is a focus on the percussion. Percussion is a rhythm, rhythmic instrument. And in these moments, the energy of the energy of the public was raised, so they were raised. Yeah. That's how he did it. That's how he did it. And so he kind of introduced the technique or the theory of the merry-go-round. And he introduced the technique Yeah. Um, 
And the idea behind it was that he would not play the whole song, like most of the DJs, they would play the whole song, but he would take two copies and he would extend that drum part. So he would take, uh, for example, this is a song. Uh, uh, і він, наприклад, знаходив всю частину на одному вінілі, програвав її і одночасно потім ставив знову, повторював на іншому вінілі. Тобто він мав так продовжувати цю частину. Тому що звичайно джей програвали пісню, а тут він брав частину і якось продовжував її час yeah. програвання. Так. So this is Baby Huey. It's a song, there's a nice drum part. So he had two copies. Я була в дві копії тієї пісні, назву ви почули. And I don't have two copies, but I have an MP3 also. So this part, people would dance. And then it would go like that, yeah? So, and so it was very, uh, how to say, rough kind of. It was not super technical because the apparatur he used was probably like a belt drive uh, Vertushka. Yeah, it's not like with a strong motor. So he kind of like just played and then played the other without being very rhythmical. But yeah, there would be a energy that stayed up and he would do that the whole night and go from drum part to drum part, new song and mix it all. Yeah, and so he would also have a microphone and he would kind of like on those parts where the drum bass would be, um, he would like call out like, hey, be boys, be girls. And it would be like the B stands for break. Like break girls, break boys. Um, and he also like kind of interacted with the people, talking a bit. And he took that from Jamaican culture toasting, where they would also talk in between playing music. break. <laughs> І взагалі просто він розвивав інтерактив з публікою. Тобто він не просто проводив музику, він ще й якось спілкувався, взаємодіяв. І це взагалі пішло від тостингу з Ямайки. Тобто, can I explain what toasting is? Тобто у Ямайці там просто ставили вініл, програвали пісню, потім такі так прибрали, ставлять нову. І поміж у цій паузі вони розмовляють з публікою. They would also have. They would also have some effects, like some. And then they would have the microphone between songs, you know, like so one vinyl. What you say? Yeah, they would have like a effect box with like a siren or like an echo, like you know. Не були коробочки, де були записані різні ефекти з уковід. Там якась сирена. So then it wouldn't be like one song finished. There would be some continuation. Ага, тобто вони прибрали пісню, вона якось закінчилась, але вони продовжували якесь аудіосупроводження, щось говорили, щоб якось підтримувати взагалі публіку і увагу. So he he took that idea of toasting. І взяв цю ідею, використав її. And then when time went uh, passed by, like he, he would play more parties, and there would be like a guy that would do his MCing. He wouldn't stop doing it, he would focus on the DJing, and there would be like One guy MCing. MC stands for Master of Ceremony. Тобто, але різниця в тому, що він розмовляв не під час пауз, а коли він грав, тому що не було ж пауз. Він прорвав з двох прорвачів. І потім через декілька вечірок в нього з'явився партнер, який був, який називався MC. Я думаю, ви знаєте взагалі слово MC, так? Який якраз замість нього розмовляв під час музики. Тобто він фокусувався саме на грі, а його партнер MCів. Yeah. Master of Ceremony, it's like a sponsor ceremony. Namada. Namada, for our country. And that, that, that guy, and he's considered to be the first rapper, that was uh, Kokla Rock. Um, just the name, Kokla Rock. He never, like, he never, I don't think he ever uh, recorded songs, but he was like the first guy doing it live at the, cons- at the DJ parties. Aha, and first... Такий тип був Кокля Рок. Він вважається першим репером, 
але нема записів, типу, це він робив саме під час виступів. Окей. Okay. There are two other founding fathers. А uh, ще є два засновники. Um, батьки. Yeah, and those are uh, Africa Bambata. Це Африка Бомбата. And uh, Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster Flash. Yeah. Uh, Africa Bambata was part of a gang called the Black Spades. Yeah, першим він був uh, частиною банди. Yeah, Black Spades. Black Spades. Called, yeah. And he saw that there was a lot of violence, a lot of like negative energy. І він побачив взагалі багато насилля, багато негативної енергії, ну звісно. But he also DJ'd and he 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 thought okay with this this culture that we're doing here we can uh unite all those gangs and instead of, instead of fighting we can like put our energy in something positive. Mm-hmm. І він вирішив, ну він також диджей, і він вирішив, що він може використовувати цю культуру, щоб поєднати кон mm-hmm. як конкуруючі а, банди, які взагалі були ворогами, а, поєднати єдине ціле, так, цю mm-hmm. організацію. Yeah. А і щоб конвертувати цю негативну енергію щось позитивне, щось корисне. And культуру. He started the organization, the Universal Zulu Nation. Um, yeah, Zulu coming from African culture, not ah, sure Zulu. from where, yeah. yeah. Um, but so he, he did a trip to Africa and when he came back, he founded the African, uh, the Universal Zulu Nation. And the ideals, I'm going to read them because I don't know them. Uh, the ideals like of the, the, the Universal Africa. Zulu Nation are knowledge, Zanya. wisdom, Understanding, freedom, justice, justice and equality, and then the most important, peace, love, unity and having fun. Peace, love, fun. <laughs> yeah, having fun. Um, and overcoming the negative to the positive. But they also focused on science, mathematics, facts, and the wonders of the supreme force. Yeah, who you can call like God, you know, they, they some kind of higher being, you know. Um, and some 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 people thought it was like kind of a religion, you know, like but kind of, yeah. Uh, and, and this was for all colors, all races, all religions, uh, all nations and all civilizations. Uh, and it was also Africa Bambata who coined the four elements of hip hop. And so you have the DJing, uh, you have the MCing or the rapping, yeah. but then you also have the break dancing and graffiti art. Um, we're gonna focus on DJing and like the music more, uh, not so much on the dancing and the uh, graffiti, but that's a big part of the hip hop culture. Because some people think hip hop it's music, but it's more than music. It's a whole uh, kind of concept. No, зараз ми будемо фокусувати саме на музичній частині хіп хопу, але для розуміння хіп хоп це взагалі культура, яка поєднує різні форми, так? Тобто це не тільки про музику. Це не просто жанр, це саме культура. And so they wanted to keep kids away from the streets and from all that negative negativity and that violence. Вони хотіли, щоб їх діти не, ну, не брали участь у насилі, у всіх цих бійках на вулиці. So instead of fighting, they would fight or battle on the dance floor for example by break dancing against each other and, and look I'm the best or, or I'm better and, and that's how they would fight or even MC battling like a rap battle like I have the best rhymes mm-hmm. uh, or even a DJ battle um, but also with graffiti like it would be like of a competition mm-hmm. uh, between graffiti artists I did that uh, train or that metro uh, you know, or that wall, and it's really beautiful, or, you know, it was like a competition. Тобто, тоді ідея була в тому, щоб люди, особливо підлітки, вони змагалися на вулицях, ну, як зазвичай, там, у біках і так далі, а саме змагалися там на танцполі, так, тобто, як брейкданцери, або саме якось це у нас є, там, ей, раунд, ну, типу, як МС проти МС, так, я не або графіті, хто краще намалює. Ну, типу, тобто, оця, оце усі змагання, оце, е, 
що вони завжди у них було якось у душі, так що треба змагатися один проти одного. Вони це конвертували у саме такий формат, mm-hmm. який не приносив нічого поганого насправді. Um, then the third guy, Grandmaster Flash, um, he was a very good DJ, but he was also kind of a um, what is he called? Autodidact, yeah. Autodidact. Autodidact. It means that he learned himself, like uh-huh. uh, he didn't go to a school to learn something, but he just figured it out by himself. For example, when he was young, when he was a kid, he would open radios and see all the wires and how it works. So he was kind of a scientist or an engineer also. I mm-hmm. um, Um, and so he developed three techniques that were very important in uh, hip hop. So first you had uh, Graham, um, Cool Herc yeah, playing these kind of uh, drum breaks and extending them, making them longer by playing two copies and go from the right to the left. But it wasn't very... Um, Like when people were dancing, they were dancing on the rhythm, yeah, r- rhythm, and then it would change, and it was like, oh, where is the rhythm, where is the rhythm? Ah, there it is, there it is. It wasn't very fluent. Ну, тобто, як ми вже говорили про техніку цього хухерка, карусель, так, що він подовжував якусь частину пісні, саме драмбрейки. Але це було взагалі не ідеально, тобто, технічно. А саме Grandmaster Flash, він... What would Master Flash do? Well, he developed the backspin. А він розвинув техніку backspin. And there's, there's another nice coincidence, kind of, that helped push forward hip-hop, and that was uh, July 13th, 77. Jul, Jul, yeah. Um, they, there was a blackout in New York. And so there, were, there was a lot of looting. So all these young kids, like 15, 16, 17, they saw those parties and were like, I also want to be a DJ. So they took a baseball bat, they took a baseball bat or a brick, and they just uh, yeah, killed, killed the, the, the windows and went to music shops and took vertushki, took uh, everything they needed, you know? And so after that blackout, All over New York started yeah. becoming these block parties, like on the street. Yeah, like young people who had their sound now, their, their, all their uh, equipment. They would open a street pole, like a street lantern. They, they would take the electricity there and on the street they would do their... Their, their, their parties. And this also kind of pushed this culture because before that it was specifically the Bronx and everybody from Brooklyn, from Queens, all those different uh, quart- no, not quartal, uh, districts in New York, they would come to the Bronx to have those parties. But then it kind of grew out of this small part and it grew bigger all over New York. І люди з інших районів туди приїжджали спеціально на ці вечірки. Зараз вже завдяки тому, що люди отримали ще обладнання, воно вже вечірки з'явилися по всьому Нью-Йорку. And then you have a woman called Sylvia Robinson. Була жінка, яку звали Сильвія Робертсон. Robinson. <laughs> she was a soul singer from the 60s and 70s and she had created her own record label. Так, вона була відомою співачкою з Soul music, and she created her own label. Uh, and that label was Sugar Hill Records. Sugar Hill Records. And she went to a um, to a party, and she saw this new culture of hip hop at the party, like the DJ and the MC, and the, she's like, "Wow, this is really cool. This is like the the, the new the new uh, modni. How you say like trendy? Yeah, trendy. This is the new trendy. We have to record this." We have to record this. So she went to the DJs and the MCs. Hey, let's record something. And everybody was like, no, hip hop is something that you do 
live. It's something on the street. You cannot record it. So she asked her son, do you know some guy who raps? Yeah. And he's like, not really. Oh, there's this guy in a pizza shop. He makes pizza and he raps. And that guy was this guy, Big Hank. Big Hank. Big Hank. And he was a pizza man, but also at night he would be a bouncer, a, a bouncer. security in a club. So that's how he picked up the rapping, because he uh -huh. saw the, so the parties and he saw the MCs. And so he's like to this Sylvia Robinson, okay, I'll do it. But um, he didn't really have reps. So he was kind of like, oh, what am I... Yeah, text. He didn't have... text. So he's like, oh, what am I going to do? And he knew some rapper named Grandmaster Kaz. And, and he said like, hey, can, can I have some, do you have some text for me, you know, because I'm going to record a song. And rap, grand, uh, Grandmaster Kaz said like, oh yeah, here, you can have my rhyme book. And so they recorded a song. Yeah. Big Hang together with Wonder Mike and Master G. Yeah. So this Sylvia Robinson took a bass player, took a drummer, uh, took a, yeah, all these musicians, made a song and created this. Did you hear that? It's kind of like the stab, you know? This is uh, Big Hank, or one of those guys. All the text that is being sung is, is from the other guy. <laughs> Grandmaster Kia. So it was all plagiat, yeah? Plagiarism? Yeah. Um, another part of the plagiat was that they... Let me... You hear the bass? Chic good times. It's a copy. They just took they took a bass player, they said play the same bass and we're gonna make a song. Nile Rogers, the producer and the founder of Chic, he heard this song and he's like, what the hell is this? So, so they went to the court. But then they had like a mutual agreement that uh -huh. uh, Nile Rogers of Chic would be on the credits of this song and he would also get money for it. But so this is... It's, it's not the first first. There's another one that was like two weeks before that also used kind of the same sound with people rapping, not singing, but rapping. But this is considered to be the first one that really pff, broke out. I believe in Belgium, uh, this was number one for a couple of weeks. Uh, and, the, and we're talking about uh, December or early. This, uh, Shut the LM. Shut the LM. No? Okay. So, is everybody okay? Uh, 
Who wants to go to the shelter? Be welcome. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so and this first record, first hip hop record or second, um, it was the beginning of the old school era, this old school hip hop era. Where it was no longer a very local New York and a very live culture, it was also recorded and it could be bought as a commodity. Mm -hmm. So not only street culture, but also yeah, yeah com commercial. And a lot of like the, the purists in hip hop, yeah, they consider those guys to be kind of not real, like sellouts. But still this song, this song is now in like the Hall of Fame. Uh, and it's also one of the songs that's taken up by the Congress Library of the United States, which is like, you know, Congress, it's like where the Verkhovna mm Radna -hmm. kind of, and they have like a library and every year they elect some songs that are important for American culture. And this is Congress, one of the hip hop songs. Yeah. Um, so then we start with the old school hip hop. And as you heard, maybe, I don't know if you understood the rhymes, but it was like a hip to the hip hop and you don't stop rocking to the beat. No, no, no. It's very party minded, like the text. Yeah, it, it, it's, there's a lot of connection to disco, like the kind of sound, uh, but also what they are rapping about, it's more about partying and about dancing, having fun, having a good time. Yeah, I do. A little bit. <laughs> and this is another one of the same uh, label, Sugar Hill, um, called The Treacherous Three. It's called Body Rock. We got something new, we got something new. Well, if you're ready, like it, ain't it like a movie for you. You see, we get box stars, but you to us. So let us take you the deal, because it is a mod. Well, I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a hundred things in the face. I'm a new one, ain't a Furious Five, Grandmaster Flash, що ми говорили, який винайшов декілька технік хіп-хопу. Він насправді взагалі нічого не робив у цьому записі. Це просто використовує його ім'я. If you listen to the text. Everywhere, people pissing on the stage, you know they just don't care. 
broken glass everywhere. People, yeah. People pissing on the station. They just don't care. <laughs> on the on the остановка. На остановке. Yeah. Um, so they go from hey, let's have fun to like broken glass everywhere, pissing on the station. They just don't care. You know. Yeah, they're, well, where they're living in New York and yeah, the social problems of... Yeah. So this is a very important... Um, yeah, this is a super important because from here on we go to the new school era which is 83 till 86 and the rappers start rapping about um, essential stuff not just about parties and about you know but about stuff that's going on in the african-american community uh, or just the new york community and talking to the listener uh, so that there's a bigger message not just mm -hmm. И вони вже співають не про вечірки, а саме вже розмовляють з слухачем, розповідають про життя їх спільноти, їх ком'юніті, про життя у місті. Вже є якийсь взагалі меседж у цьому. Тобто це коли якось поп почав реп почав використовуватись для меседжу. And in that new school era you have a couple of artists like Run DMC. Ось як приклад артист Run DMC. So we're talking 83-86. And it's also the beginning years of MTV. And so Run DMC, they had been performing live, had some records. And then their, their uh, label, their kind of bosses, they were like, okay, maybe you should um, do a song that you usually do live because they were doing um, the beginning of an Aerosmith song called Walk This Way. So they would do this live, right? They would have like the intro and they would rap over the intro and every time the eh came, they would go back to the beginning. Their DJ would do the prolonging. So they would rap, you know, rap, rap, rap. <laughs> and so on. They would continue. And so their, their label said, maybe you should do like a cover of this song. So they, they listened to the whole song. They never had listened to it because they only had the first part. And so they heard. And they were like, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. Because the text is like way different, but then the label was like, "Yeah, it's gonna be good." So they were like, no, "Okay, let's try to do it." And so they made video. This was a super important song because MTV decided to play this song because it was like rock for a white population. Mm -hmm. But it was also this rap influence combined crossover. 
And so it reached uh, the whole of America. Before this, it was local, very New York, very, or you had to be a guy who bought actually the vinyl and listened to it uh, at home. But now you could have this song at the same time playing on MTV all over the country. Um, so it became a super important video for uh, rap music to grow and expand. Завдяки MTV саме хіп-хоп розійшовся по Америці, тому що до цього це була локальна культура Нью-Йорку, або ти міг почути хіп-хоп, купивши вініл, який був рідкісний на той час. А це перше, коли усі американці почули, що таке хіп-хоп. Um, another group is Beastie Boys. Інше гурт Beastie Boys. They are also very um, important in the community of hip-hop. And they were super minimal and they started using um, drum machines. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there was this new technology of drum machines. It was not new. Actually, before there was um, Africa Bambata who created um, a song called uh, Planet Rock. I'm going to play that one first. Ah, hold on. Is it like an example of using drum machine? Yeah, this is a drum machine that you hear. There's an example of the drum machine, I think. Uh, Rusa, yes, the picture of a drum machine. Yeah? TR, TR-808, Roland? Okay. Um, this is a very electronic kind of hip hop. So there's many different styles, rock, electronic. And he took a sample from Kraftwerk. Yeah, like... This is Kraftwerk. So there's this minimalism kind of, right? And a good example of this is Beastie Boys. Now, here's a little story I got to tell about three bad brothers you know so well. It started way back in history with that rock. There is no melody, there's just a drum beat, and they thought, mm, let's let's reverse it, you know, let's record it, and then let's the play tape backwards, and let's record it, and yeah. This is the actual beat. But they thought, let's reverse it. Simple, but... Yeah. So yeah, that's an example of how something very minimalistic can have a very big impact because this was a very um, big album, the song um, the album of which this song was a part, called uh, License to Ill, became the first number one album on the American like Billboard charts. The first hip hop album? Right? No, 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 the first. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, it was the first hip hop album, but it was like a chart for all the albums. Uh huh. Uh, Це був перший альбом хіп-хоп, який став альбомом номер один в Америці за Гаві. So, you have, yeah, censorship. З'явилась цензура. Um, they, they saw that in that uh, new school era and in the early golden age era of hip-hop, they saw that they became very powerful. Uh, there was artists like uh, Rakim, EPMD, Public Enemy, 
and they started telling stories, but they also started talking about uh, African pride, you know, the, to be proud of their culture, to be powerful, to be uh, ec economically powerful also and independent. And I think, and there's a theory that they saw this and in like the establishment, they were kind of afraid because if they would influence all these young people to become empowered, then they wouldn't control those people. And so they started kind of bad-mouthing hip-hop. Bad-mouthing, you understand? No. Like they no. talking bad, talking bad about mm -hmm. hip-hop. Uh, ah, тобто, якщо коротко, uh, влада зрозуміла, що хіп-хоп має великий вплив на молодь особливо. Тобто там були меседжі, типу, як, що возвеличення африканської культури, що вони сильні і так далі. І влада боялася, що вони можуть втратити контроль на молоді африканської, так? Oh, yeah, yeah. А, тому вони почали, як, як, цензуру пускати. Ну, так, цензуру пускати, якось сварити. Так. One example is NWA. I don't know if you heard of NWA. На них з концертів? NWA, they are a gangster rap group from Compton, from uh, LA, like a suburb, uh, uh, district of LA. Лос Анджелесу. Uh -huh. um, and they had a song called Police ID Na, you know what, you know? <laughs> well, I can say it, fuck the police, yeah? And they got a letter from the FBI saying like, this is not okay, kind of intimidating the label, but also the group. Uh, there was also another guy, Ice-T, he was also a rapper, but he also had a a uh, heavy metal group called Body Count. Um, and he had also a song called Cop Killer. Mm -hmm. And it got like banned. The, the, it, was, it was outlawed. It was censored. Cop Killer, yeah. Hip Hop like discriminated police, right? Well, the thing is, it was a heavy metal song, but they said it was rap. Because it would be easier to target African American culture than heavy metal, because heavy metal is something of like a white kind of background. And so, if you would say they censor heavy metal, there would be a whole, a whole uh, crowd saying, What is this? There's the First Amendment, freedom of speech, you know, that's a big, uh -huh. it's the first amendment in the Constitution of the United States, freedom of speech. Aha, so it's a very interesting fact, if I understand correctly. There was one rapper who was also involved in heavy metal. He was a song of heavy metal, like, how is this name called? Oh, the song. Sorry. The song Cop, Cop Killer. Ah, it's a song of Cop Killer. This song was heavy metal, but the police called it a rap song, so that they could be banned. Because if they banned heavy metal, it's heavy metal, easier. Like, there was an audience. It's easier to target a minority. Yeah. Uh, another example is Two Life Crew. Uh, the song is called Me So Horny and it's a very sexual kind of content. Um, they would have like shows with women on stage that weren't uh, afraid to show their body. And um, some police guy or some politician guy heard this song. And because it became so popular, there were also like uh, white, little white girls, 13, 14 year, years, singing along with the song, me so horny, me so horny, you know? Uh, and we're like, whoa, this is, this is obscene. This is, mm -hmm. this is not okay. And they, they went so far. It was, this was in Florida, on my, like Miami area. And this was, they went so far that they uh, said to uh, record store owners who had this album in their shops, it was forbidden to sell it and they went with the undercover cop and they saw that the record owner uh, the, the the shop owner sold this record 
and he was put in handcuffs and taken to prison. For, for selling music about about sex or whatever, you know. Uh, yeah. So it's it's crazy. Um, they understood that America was very a land of free speech, and they couldn't they couldn't continue censoring this music and this is how i'm gonna finish um, they saw that it was powerful so the big music corporations kind of um, took the artists and shaped them into what they wanted the big uh, auditorium to hear well, so you have Universal Music, um, Warner Brothers, yeah, yeah, Sony Music. Yeah, yeah, all these big corporations. And they said, okay, if we cannot contain them, if we cannot, look, it's not that they said it, but we want to make money with it. That's logic. That's the capitalistic, capitalistic uh, idea. But they also wanted to send a certain message out. And that's, and that's why like mainstream hip hop uh, doesn't talk about empowerment of your community and trying to become community yeah, knowledge, like trying to, to give knowledge to your listeners. But more about uh, killing each other, uh, selling drugs, um, guns, all that stuff. Like, that's, that's, that became... made it on purpose? Well, there is a theory that there is a connection between those uh, companies and the prison industry complex. So in America, in Ukraine, it's probably not like that. In America, the prisons are private. Uh, companies. And in the contracts that those companies write with the government, because they do a service and they get money from the government. But in those contracts, says like it cannot be vacant. The prison cells have to be full for 95%. The same people who own those big uh, music corporations, Universal, and this is not, this, this is not a conspiracy, this is not a conspiracy theory, this is fact. They also have uh, shares, like stock, yeah, of this prison industry complex. So you could say, well, well, well no, but it, that's pure fact. Like the same people owning this, like culture, own. And so it's, it's not only because you have a, like a big company like Universal, it's not like they, or Warner, like for example, they not only make vinyl and sell it, they also have TV stations, radio stations. And there are like five groups, conglomerates, that own like 95%, 98% of all the TV stations, radio stations, internet channels. So you can ask yourself the question, if, if I turn on the radio or like the, the hit lists and every rap song is about bitches and drugs, and guns, Narcotic and I'm gonna shoot you, and n-word, 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 then you can, like, why wouldn't they push another sort of uh, message? And then, of course, you have the question, it's supply and demand, maybe people want to hear this, but I... Supply and demand? Economical. <laughs> But I don't believe that people ask for, oh, I want to hear more of this. They just get, it gets pumped in their brain so much that they start liking it. Mm -hmm. And so if you push more of a conscious hip, conscious hip hop, more of an intelligent hip hop, people would also like that. But that's not what they're doing.
Угу. Ну, і він вважає, що насправді це просто люди люблять, тому що їм це штовхають, продають таку музику. Але якщо б е, вони слухали свідомий хіп хоп вони теж це і полюбляли. Тобто це питання маркетингу? Так. Mm, I don't know. Окей. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, sorry for the chaos. Вибачте за хаос. It's my first time. Це мій перший раз. Uh, I hope you guys got a little bit more informed about Думаю, what hip hop is. Стали трохи більш проінформовані. And I would say if you guys have questions, let's have like 10 10 minutes, 10 minutes uh, or pause. А uh, East West Coast. Um, So that's the East West Coast. That's the part of the the golden era, uh, starting end of the 80s with the West Coast NWA, which I just showed, very gangster, but also Snoop Dogg, uh, then Dr. Dre, who was a part of NWA. NWA, Dr. Dre, Tupac, um, and then there was the East Coast with. Um, Bad Boy Records, which was a label, label Bad Boy Records. and that had uh, Notorious B.I.G., one of the biggest names in hip-hop all time, and Puff Daddy, who was like the producer and the, the kind of the owner of this label. And they started kind of, uh, yeah, they started this competition that became dirtier and dirtier. Um, they would make songs about each other, calling each other all kinds of names, you know. Um, this, this records, they call it. Um, and it ended up with Tupac, also one of the biggest names in hip-hop, getting shot in Las Vegas. In, yeah, in 1996. And then Notorious B.I.G. getting shot. In Los Angeles in 1997. Um, And that's where kind of that golden era stops. And where it goes more into the bling era. Uh, uh, um, poetry art? Um, well, you have poetry uh, poets like, for example, uh, Gil Scott Heron. I don't know if you heard of him, but Gil Scott Heron in the 70s, he just recited poetry over music. So he would just talk poetry a little bit like, uh, what's his name? I can't remember. Um, but so there's a lot of influence of this Gil Scott Heron into the hip hop world, not only because of the poetry, but also in taking the music and sampling it into uh, a new beat, a new hip-hop instrumental where rappers would um, rap over. So there's this reference, not only by poetry, but also musically reference to this artist, for example. Um, but yeah, slam poetry, I don't know if you know slam, slam poetry, that's kind of connected to hip-hop. Like slam poetry, it's without music, you would just go on stage and say your poem but in a way that is rhythmically, or you can do it in whatever way, very expression, uh, ex, um, expression, I don't, I don't know what the word is, um, but e very energetic. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a connection between poetry and, and hip hop. Because yeah, hip hop is about the text, the rhymes, uh, giving your message. I don't know nothing about Ukrainian hip hop, <laughs> but I, I would I would like to find out, of course. Uh, can you tell a couple of words uh, about the reasons uh, of war with East and West Coast? Well, um, I think there were economical reasons. I think that when you um, make one camp and you make an opponent like a kind of enemy, it will get you more attention. Um, so I think it's economical in the first place, uh, probably like many wars. Um, and then of course it's the ego of the rappers, because the one rapper says this, like I f your woman, you know, w what did he say? Oh, I'm gonna say another thing. And then 
You know, there was all, always this kind of gang mentality because it's a urban culture. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. I, I don't know a lot about it. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. My brother's doing fast on my mother's TV. Says she watches too much. It's just not healthy. All my children in the daytime, Dallas at night. Can't even see the game or the Sugar Ray fight. The bill collectors, they ring my phone and scare my wife when I'm not home. Got a bum education, double digit inflation. Can't take the train to the job. There's a strike at the station. Me on King Kong standing on my back. Can't stop to turn around. Broke my sacroiliac, a mid range migraine, cancer membrane. Sometimes I think I'm going insane. I swear I might hijack a plane. Don't push me. Call, I'm close to the edge. I'm trying. Not to lose my head. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under.